Hey guys, what is up? I got another C++ tutorial for you. Today we are going to be talking about switch statements uh, mainly, and we're also going to be talking about break and continues control flow statements. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so what I plan on making is just a simple console application that reads in you know a few option choices and then prints a message based on that option. And instead of using ifs, which I believe we we went through in a previous tutorial, we are going to be using switch statements to uh, do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We have a while true, and let's give them a prompt. Uh, please enter option A, B, C, E2, exit. Okay, uh, let's make sure we don't print. Okay, we don't end the line, and let's have a character to store it, and let's read it. So you guys should know basically everything that this does because we've already gone over stuff like that before. And for the switch statement, it's basically just switch and open close parentheses. And inside this, uh, these parentheses is what's, uh, what's known as the selector. And the selector basically is what you're going to be comparing against with your various options that uh, we'll, we'll go over. So let's go ahead and put option in here since that's what we're comparing against. And we have our various cases, which um, basically is how you specify what you want to uh, do something based on, you know, the switch option. So our first case is A, then we have a B case, and a C case, and an E case. Since we have A, B, C are the options, and E is also an option. So um, the way you write it, you know, just do case and then whatever the value is. You can also do this for things like integers. So if I did like int option and it was one through five, I, instead of putting a here, I'd put one, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So after these uh, colons and before the next case statement is where you put all your code that you want to run if, you know, this option value is, for example, a. So we want to print out something like option A, you're the best, congratulations. <laughs> and then in order for um, the subsequent code to actually not execute, we have to add a break statement. So what this is doing is it hits case A, it prints this out, and it, um, it breaks. So it breaks out of the switch statement. So it just goes to the end of the uh, close print uh, curly brace. Um, and you can use breaks and things like for loops to actually break prematurely out of a for loop. Um, it's basically just a way to jump out of the scope uh, prematurely. So let's go ahead and give these things options too. Option B, you lose, of course, have to have a losing option. And option C, uh, which we say option C, nothing. Okay, and you notice I've left out this break statement here, and I'm, I basically want to show you what happens when you don't include a break statement. So we'll put one in here, and then for this case, let's see, we want to exit, right? So let's just go ahead and return. So return will break out of everything, including, you know, the main function. It'll just return the zero value. And there's one more thing you can do. You can have a default option. So basically, if none of if option is neither A, B, C, or E, uh, this code will execute here. So we probably want to yell the user, please enter a valid option, and again just break. So let's go ahead and test this out. Let's build it, run it, see what happens. So if we do option A. Option A, you're the best. Cool, it printed. So now let's see what happens when we do B. Notice we did not include the uh, break statement. So what happened, it actually executed this code. Option B, you lose. Then because there wasn't a break statement there, it just continued on to case C. It didn't really care. So um, it also printed out option C, nothing. And if we do C, it should be option C, nothing. You know, If we don't enter anything or actually something invalid. Oh, looks like it uh, piped it in <laughs> one character at a time. Whoops. So let's go ahead and do L, you know, or something like that. You know, you get please enter valid option. So it's basically a catch-all for all other uh, cases that uh, don't exist. And let's go ahead and exit. So we do E. So that returns us out. And that's pretty much switch statements. Like, they're very simple. Um, 
just have a something you're selecting on and then what you want to do if it's selected. They're really good for if you have just like a bunch of different options of like integers and you want to do something that looks a lot cleaner than just a bunch of if else if statements. Um, they're preferable to if and else ifs if you have basically a large number of options. If it's only like one or two things, then if statements are probably better because you don't have to like write all this extra, you know, cruft with case and switch and stuff like that. Cool. So let's go ahead and just comment this out since I just want to talk one more thing about um, for loops with continue. So for example, you have a for loop that goes to five. We covered for loops in the previous tutorial. You can uh, watch that if you want. And basically, we don't like to. Uh, we don't want to print out to. So what are we going to do here? Um, let's just add a print here. I don't know what to did, but basically, we could do something like if i equals two do nothing else, you know, have a number print. So like if I had an else statement here, that would accomplish it. But you know, that kind of looks a little messy. We might not want to. Uh, uh, have an extra else statement in there. So another thing you can do, um, if you could have break here, you know, that would actually only print 0 and 1. That's not really what we want. So what we can use here is what's known as continue. So what continue does is when it hits this statement, it basically just skips to the end of the loop. It doesn't execute any more of the code, and it just like jumps back up at the front again. So basically just is a way to kind of exit early, but not completely exit out of the loop. So to show you that, we'll just go and build and run this. Oh, we need to have a just a get chart to make sure that the console doesn't end prematurely. Cool. So we have 0, 1, 3, 4. Notice that 2 did not print. If we had something like a break statement here and we build it, yes, we want to stop debugging. It would be 0, 1, we'd be done. So notice the difference. We were able to continue with the for loop with continue, hence the name, and we broke out of it completely with break. Um, let's see, we went over switch break continue. Um, we have all default options. That's pretty much it for, uh, for this tutorial. If you have any questions, you know, leave a comment. Uh, make sure to watch all my other C++ tutorials. Thanks, Quackware signing out.